I'm going to be talking about the evolution of interfaces, where we came from, and where exactly we're going. There's a lot of talk about virtual assistants. There's talk, a lot of talk about artificial agents uh, powered by artificial intelligence. But uh, just to understand how we got here and where exactly are we heading towards. Interfaces. Everything is about interfaces. Uh, where we uh, started from, uh, let's say, 25 years ago, that was our interface. A single purpose device, high, high resolution topography. You can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, you can hold it in front of you, and it never gets lost. The only way it can get lost is because uh, if you trash it. And guess what? I get a new update every morning, next day. <laughs> Unless there's a technical failure, such as weather or paper boy didn't, didn't come. Here we are today. The world of artificial intelligence uh, powering chatbots across the world with uh, thousands and thousands of brands working together, asking about, uh, you can ask your personalized your queries, you can make payments, you can ask about, uh, let's say, uh, what's my bill, why my bill is high. However, the thing is, from newspaper to chatbots, everything is about customer experience and the customer satisfaction. Effectiveness of the technology and the simplicity of the interface is where, where these technologies have come up and basically mass marketed or mo through mass consumption, we are consuming this. 10 years ago, we didn't even know what, um, how to check our weather. We were, we were switching on TVs or we were going onto the internet but now, with a single device, we can, on our smartphone, we can instantly know what the weather will be, what the time will be, everything. It's all about effectiveness and the simplicity at the end. Now, chatbots, uh, again, they're awesome. Everything is beautiful. Uh, you can ask, let's say you're a customer of Vodafone, you can come to us, you can instantly ask uh, why my bill is high, what is my usage, can I transfer another SIM? Can I get another SIM? Can I get a new phone? You can ask HSBC about uh, what would it take to open a new account. Everything is beautiful. However, they're really good at only one thing and one thing alone, if you fall within the decision tree of the chatbot. Any single time you fall out of it, the world changes, and this is your experience. They're really annoying at this point. Conversational UI, as they called it, was absolutely great. I think we're still in that stage where a lot of brands, a lot of companies are coming together and everybody is excited about AI. However, everything falls within the decision tree. We have frameworks such as IBM Watson to API.ai to wit.ai, recast AI, motion.ai. Everybody talks about AI, but I have to hire five people to structure all the conversations and go through the decision tree. So it's very, it's AI, but it's in a very, very rudimentary form. It does not help me as a customer. And if we want to take chatbots to the next level, I think machine learning is an important answer. I don't have to tell this crowd that the importance of machine learning, but be good. So earlier. This is what the entire phase was. The design teams were separate, the technology teams were separate, and the user was separate altogether. When you're designing something, you have an understanding. Yes, design and technology teams tend to work together and say, this is what I'm trying to do. Uh, this is how I'm going to structure my architecture. This is how I'm going to structure my scripts. And then design team comes together. Can you pull in another script? as an API that we can possibly use to enhance the customer experience. However, no matter how closely they're interconnected, they're still interconnected, it's not one. This is what, what we are uh, gonna be facing with today. If you look at the basic interface of a chatbot or artificial uh, assistance or virtual assistance, so to speak, there is no design. Everything is a card. Everything is a map. Everything is a map within the conversation. 
So the content guy or the copywriter or guy or the person who is actually designing the interface cannot sit separately within the technology because if we're going to use, let's say, a natural language processing engine, the content guy has to sit within, uh, with the technology guy in order to understand that this is how my training model is going to work. This is if I'm getting 90% confidence level on my neural network, they both have to work together that this is correct, this is incorrect. So there is no differentiation between design or technology anymore. And the user cannot be separate anymore because everything is contextual, everything is personalized. Everything is, uh, you cannot think of programs in terms of websites anymore. There isn't a navigation where I would search and I would go through it. There isn't a segmentation of 50,000 people that you're personalizing a particular banner for, or five people. Now the challenge is, how do I personalize and contextualize everything for one person? If, if, I am, uh, if I'm traveling abroad, let's say I'm going to Colombia, and I'm having specific problems about my roaming in context of Vodafone, that problem may not be faced by thousands of people, but that problem may be faced by one person, and hence why this is very important that we take care of that. We have power of all these technologies with us. Yeah. I think we're still in the nascent stage, very nascent stage in implementation of these technologies. However, it is still very complex. The problems that we're facing in our companies, uh, I hope I'm not alone in that, is, is humongous, uh, to be fair. It's very, very complex, which methodology, which training model, which programming language can work best for my data set. And that is another issue that some, some of the companies, or even uh, startups for that matter, do not have the luxury of having large data sets. So they can train their models and give uh, appropriate responses. How do you map out all the intents that are possible in order to come up with the best possible answer or the output? that solves users problem in a contextual and personalized way. And that's what the challenge is. But again, we're still scratching the surface. Uh, imagine 2015, nobody was talking about AI in terms of the larger scale. Countries such as South America, countries such as Eastern Europe are still not even, they're very, the companies are coming out of there, but they're very far in between. There isn't, uh, there isn't the same sort of enthusiasm as we see here in the UK or America in terms of the overall startup, startup structure. So the opportunities are absolutely huge. But what exactly is the future? If we look at in the past, uh, we had a website and we had IVR. Now these were, IVR in itself is what the conversational UI came out to be. It was again a decision tree. You could press a button and it would give you an output and take you to the next level. In the end you speak to the human. And I think that's the evolution of, of the overall technology, how we've got here. Now we have multiple devices, there are screen interactions, we can open tablet, we can open our phones and we can go through all the structures of the website, you can talk, talk to everybody. However, what is exactly is the future? The future is beyond the devices, the future is beyond, beyond any of the screens. It's, we may have smart TV, but has anybody tried using smart TV? It's, it's incredibly complex in itself. So, surface interactions will be the future, I believe. Uh, sorry, I have to uh, swift through some of the stuff. I think machine learning will define the interfaces of the future. The interfaces cannot be taught in terms of simple screen sizes. A surface such as this could eventually become the interaction models. Now the problems in the past 
that the customers are facing. Like 41% of the people still feel overwhelmed by the wealth of choices on the web. That problem still exists, and chatbots take that away. However, with machine learning, we have a great opportunity to take this to the next level. The future is not about less interactions. It's more about the impact. I'll give you some of the examples. Uh, I'll swift through this. The whole idea is that chatbots is just an uh, intermediary form before we get to the actual <coughs> interface, which is no interface at all. This is the future of the interface, where there isn't a website, there isn't a screen, there isn't, there isn't uh, essentially a constraint, a constrained screen size or so on and so forth. Everything, for example, a driverless car's windshield tomorrow will become your interface that you can tap, that you can talk to, and that you can interact with. With machine learning, it can find out what's happening within the environment. The interaction is still important, but it changes the way how we look at things today. It literally changes the way how we look at things today. It will take us a little bit of time to get there, but this is what I feel is the future in the next three to five years. Where you have a spider in your house and you can easily, you want to find out whether it's dangerous or not, whether I should be scared or not. A simple example would be, this is what I imagine. I'm driving, let's say, in France. On the fly, Google Translate is converting all the road signs uh, for me from French to English. At the same time, I know where I want to go. It tells me in 15 minutes you will arrive here. Now these are all powered by machine learning and I feel the chatbots or artificial agents or virtual agents is just the bridging the gap when we actually get to our destination. The idea is there is no interface. There is no screen. Everything becomes the interface. Voice, touch, and surface. We are already at this level. This example is from Sony Xperia, where you can project to a particular surface and you can interact with it easily. To end this presentation, I would say everything depends. The future of products and services are dependent on the smarter artificial intelligence powered by machine learning. Thank you.